There are mainly two things you need to know about the wind when sailing. Where is it? And how fast is it going? Wind, as you know, is essential to sailing. That is probably the most obvious statement you will hear today or ever. You're welcome. Back to the point. Knowing where the wind is coming from is also very important. There are a variety of ways to tell the direction of the wind. First off, you can feel it on your face or on your fingers if you get them wet or something. If you are more into visual indicators, many sailors tie yarn or the more sensitive cassette tape to their stays and watch what they do. Also, you can use your surroundings. What are the trees doing? Is there a flag waving? Sometimes animals can tell you. For example, seagulls stand facing the wind. Now that you know how to tell the direction of the wind, let's find out how to guess its speed. There are many fancy gadgets you can use to find out wind speed, such as anemometers, Epsom smartphones, and whatnot. The beginner sailor can use a more primitive fashion. When white caps form on water, that means the wind is going at 12 knots. If the wind is going at 12 knots, then you should probably stay out of the water. Here's a video where the wind is going 5 to 6 knots. While slow, you can still sail, and it's a pretty good pace to start learning at. Points of sail are where you are in relation to the wind. These are the terms that describe where the wind is coming from and how your boat and sails are oriented in response. The first point of sail to know is one where you can't do any actual sailing. This is directly upwind and is called the no-go or no-sail zone. When you tack, your bow has to go through the no-go zone and if you don't have enough speed and stall, that is called being stuck in irons. Every boat has a no-go zone. If you need to make an emergency stop or something of the like, you can direct your boat into the wind and it will stop. If you sail right on the very edge of the no-go zone, that is called close hauling. Your sails will be brought in very tight, as close as possible over the center of the boat. When the boat is sailing perpendicular to the wind, it is on beam reach. On beam reach, you are neither sailing upwind or downwind because the wind is coming over the beam of the boat. When you are sailing and the wind is behind you at an angle, you are on broad reach. Here, your sails are let out quite a bit, but still not fully extended. When you are sailing directly downwind, this is called running. While running, your sails will be fully extended. You can fly your spin while either running or on broad reach. You know the language, you've taken all of the safety precautions, you have assessed the wind, and you have most of your points of sail. You probably didn't even realize you've learned so much. Well, now you're on the water. What is tacking? This is when you turn the bow of the boat through the wind so the direction from which the wind is blowing changes from one side to the other. You would do this when you're sailing upwind or into the wind. You tack because you cannot sail directly upwind. Remember, that's called being stuck in irons. You must beat or make a zigzag course in order to get to your destination. Here's a simplified version of how to tack. Turn your tiller towards the sails and keep it at that angle until the sails have switched over to the other side. While this is happening, have your crew scurry on over the other side of the boat. Nothing too complicated. Now, we have come to jiving. What is it? Well, jiving is when you turn the stern of the boat through the wind so the wind direction switches from one side of the boat to the other. Jiving is basically the downwind tacking. It is less common because you can sail straight downwind, which, as we know, is called running. Here's how to jive. Point the tiller away from the sails. Keep it there at an angle until the sails have switched over. On this run, we also had to move the spinnaker over. Once again, have your crew switch sides as well. While you are sailing, you are almost constantly adjusting your sails. You want to do this to maximize their efficiency. But how do you know when and how to change them? There are two simple methods for figuring out when to adjust your sails. First, there's luffing, and then there are telltales. Remember the luff? It's here again. Well, luffing is when the luff starts to ripple because the sails have been let out too much and the airflow is disturbed. 
when this happens, sheet the sails in just until the luffing stops. This will be your optimal trim. If you think your sails might be too tight, then let them out until they start luffing, then pull them back in. Remember, if you're wondering about your sails, when in doubt, ease them out. Another way to judge the conditions of your sails are to look at your telltales. Telltales do tell tales. Telltales are pieces of cloth or plastic attached to your sails. They can tell you whether to let out or pull in your sails without needing to let the sails luff. Here is how to read them. If your telltales are hanging down limp, then you need to let your sails out. Remember, down and out. If your tails are flying up, you need to bring your sails in. You want the tails to be parallel with the boom. Here's an example of the telltales in action. The tails are hanging down, so we let the sail out until they straighten. One of the more exciting aspects of sailing, going out in the trap, is one of my favorite things to do. Going out in the trap, what is it? Well, it's a lot of fun, that's for sure. When you're trapezing or on the trap, you're hanging off the side of the boat attached to a wire and adding counterweight to the force of the wind on the sails. What sounds more fun than dangling off the edge of a boat with all your faith in a wire? When you trap, you wear a harness. You want it snug and comfortable around your legs and waist, but a little looser at the shoulders. To go out on the wire, attach yourself to the hook and kind of scoot yourself off the edge of the boat until the wire takes your weight. Then, bend one leg and push off from the edge of the boat with it. To stabilize yourself, keep your stance wide until you are comfortable enough to move around. Generally, you want to keep your weight on the forward edge of the boat to keep the bows from lifting and only move aft as the wind becomes stronger. By the way, getting splashed is one of the hazards of sailing. Expect to get wet every once in a while. All right, imagine this scenario with me. You're sailing along, minding your own business, when maybe somebody accidentally hits the tiller, or a sudden gust of wind comes along, and you do your best to keep upright and it's not working, and bam, you are officially capsized. What are you going to do? Let me start by saying, do your best not to fall on the sails. It is detrimental to their health. If you're going to fall in, try and go over the other edge of the boat, into the water and away from the sails. Also, stay by the boat. It's almost never a good idea to swim to shore. This section is called when you capsize because it is going to happen. Here are some tips for what you should do. First, try and keep the boat from turtling or turning completely upside down. You can do this by either having one of the crew support the mast or have them sit or stand on the dagger boards to start providing counterweight. Next, if you can, you should disengage the rudders and uncleat the sails. Your boat should have a writing line on board. This is a rope tied to the bottom of the strut under the mast. Throw this rope over the hole sticking out of the water in order to give yourself more leverage for tipping it over. When the boat comes over, make your first priority not to get hit. We've already had enough accidents already. And second, hold on to the boat as it comes over and get on board as quickly as you can. Your catamaran has no qualms with just sailing off without you. Once on board, assess the damage and act accordingly. It is recommended to practice a capsizing drill every once in a while so you will be prepared. Let's review what we have learned. You have been reminded of the joys of sailing. You know quite a bit of terminology. When you're on the water, you know some basic safety precautions and the rules. You can read the wind and you're familiar with the points of sail. No longer are you frightened by jibing and tacking. You can trim, trapeze, and even write the boat if you have to. Whew! That is quite a lot of information to process. But you know the best way to learn all this stuff? Get out and go sailing. I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching.
Yeah. <laughs>